I read Jeremiah chapter 14, a text today. Then I would pray and then um, share God's word with us today. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse number 14. Then the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not neither have I commanded them neither speak unto them they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and it, a thing of naught and a deceit of the heart go back a few chapters to chapter 5 verse number 30 and 31 I started the series last week, so that's why I'm reading these passages from Jeremiah around false prophets. We started the series last week on understanding the prophetic, so we're going to continue this week. Yay! Jeremiah chapter 5, verse number 30 and 31. Jeremiah 5, verses 30. Thank you. This was God speaking. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. What is it? The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. Uh, 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 this is the most horrible thing now. My people love it too. So, so tell me, so tell me, what will you do in the end thereof? What do you want to do? How can I change the narrative? My people love it so. My people love it so. This year has been a very um, trying year for Nigerians, especially for the church. I'll tell you why. Many people have left church, and they say left church, not just physically, emotionally, but disconnected from God because of what we call despair. They feel disappointed, especially with the political scenery. And a lot of people felt, oh, the prophets told us this will happen. The prophets told us this is God's will. But guess what? After all the prophecies, what's going on here? I thought you guys told us, thus hear the Lord. I travel widely and everywhere I've been to, they call me and say, reverence, I, 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 that's the prophet in the land. Are these pastors lying? Did they really, did they really hear from God? Did, they deceived us. They lied to us. Because every election here in this country, you find every pastor becomes a prophet. They all keep saying to you, oh, that person will win, this person will win, that will die. That. And so we all keep saying all kind of things. And people truly actually believe us. They believe pastors. So it's been a burden of mine. I'm writing a book, and the book will soon be out, Understanding the Prophetic. And people need to understand it. People, some pastors don't understand the prophetic. It's not everybody that's a prophet. And so we started this news last week, and I said today I will conclude with false prophets so you can understand who the false prophets are and the difference between false prophets and lying prophets last week i told you that prophecies are not predictions they are not permutations they're different prediction is something that i can predict i can tell you how many months old are you pregnant three months i can say by six months from now you'll be put into bed that's not a prophecy that's pure prediction that i'm predicting if you're a professor of macroeconomics and you look at what's going on in the country, you can say, oh, next year, because the oil, oil has gone down. This is not okay. Global price of oil is down. So Nigeria will end less. So you know what? I prophesy the economy will be bad. That's prediction. That's forecast. That's not prophecy. That's not prophecy. Prophecy is different. Prophecy is thus saith the Lord. Matthew 16 tells us, oh, you can look at a sky and predict that it will be raining because it's cloudy. That is what? Prediction. That's not prophecy. And so many of us tend to take predictions as prophecies. And so people come to us and try to, some don't predict, some do what I call permutations. They do permutations. Fela Bankulimo is running for governorship of Lagos. Fela is on which party? AAP. What's AAP again? We don't know it. So Pedro, Pastor Pedro is running on APC. Tora is running on PDP. Nobody will say Fela will win. AAP. What's AAP? I can do permutations and say, oh, the following stalwarts are behind this man. The following Mughals are here. It looks like this will win. Let me now go and 
prophesy. No, you are doing permutations. That's not prophecy. If you understand what prophecy is, it's deep. It's God's voice. And most often, most times that prophecy comes, they come off a radar. And I gave you examples in the Bible yesterday, last week. Off, totally off. What you're not even expecting is what God will say. If it's expected, most often it's not prophecy. It comes always to, to change our understanding. Are you sure that will happen? Oh yeah. That's why if it's not off, then it's not prophecy. When Elisha I told you professor last year, last week, he said, by this time tomorrow, the barley will cost this. There was a famine in 2 Kings chapter 7. And the famine was so bad, so bad, so bad. The economy was down. People were hungry. They were broke. And one man of God came in and said, by this time tomorrow, the barley will sell for one pence. In other words, if you look at the narrative, almost like saying everything, dollar, dollar will become one naira. You see, you're all laughing. That way, see, that's a laughter of Sarah. <laughs> if I come and say, by this time next week, the Lord spoke to me, Nigerian dollar to a naira at 1,002, I think, now, we become 300. People will laugh and say, <laughs> Reverend Kazale, you think, what did you drink this morning? What did you drink? That you won't call me. Maybe you're laughing. Am I right? That was what a man did. He prophesied it. He said, in 24 hours, not 24 months. Prophecies go off. It's something that you will, you will, a natural person will say no. Except they're not natural. So, one man that was a special advisor to the president on economic matters, a lord on whom the king leaned, Second Kings 7, said to Elijah, are you okay? Are you all right? Even if God, is it the man even dead God? There's something wrong with you. You don't understand macroeconomics. That's my job. Even if God were to open the windows of heaven, what you have said is impossible. Economically speaking, it is what? Impossible. Ah! Don't deceive the king. The Elisha got angry. He now did a second prophecy. God didn't tell him that one. No. That one is a curse. God didn't tell him. He said, you will see this thing happen. You will not eat it. I pro- you, I curse you for, for doubting God. This time tomorrow, this will happen. You will see it with your eyes. You will not taste it. And it happened. In 24 hours, everything came down. The king now appointed him to go and do what? To so pretend over the uh, distribution of wealth. And as he went there to see, the people trampled over him and he died. 24 hours. Now, that is a prophecy. <laughs> That's a prophecy. No permutations. No prediction. That's a prophecy. The people don't understand it. There are many more in scriptures. I can give you examples of the prophetic word that people would die. I mean, one man came and said, there'll be no rain in the land. By my word only, would there be rain? They thought he was drunk, Elijah. This man was drunk. And there was no rain. First month, second month, third month, sixth month, ninth month, one year, two years, three years. It had never happened before. Never. That one man will approach a king and say, I'm telling you, thus share the Lord. But by my word, he said, by my word, there'll be no rain. I will open the doors of heaven for him to open. I'm telling you, I've shut it up. No rain. That's a prophecy. But today we work with predictions. We work with permutations. And we call them what? Prophecies. They are not. That's why God said in that Jeremiah, there are so many false prophets I've not sent. They speak in my name to you. And you you're believing them. I've not sent them. I've not given them dreams or visions. They are not prophets. They are false prophets. But the problem is that the people love it too. The people want to believe anything. They want, they look, you know, God said a horrible thing has happened. Now. Horrible, terrible. The people love it so. How can you love oppression? How can you love deceit? How can you love hypocrisy? How can you love falsehood? In other words, there are signs that these are false prophets, but you love it so. There are signs. You can see that, mm, looks like this guy is not true. But because he's saying what you want to uh-huh. The people love it so. So God was lamenting in Jeremiah. Now you guys seem to like and prefer people that will lie to you. Those that will tell you the truth, you don't want to hear them. Those that will boldly declare the right, you don't want to hear them. Ah, I don't want to hear that. Tell me some lies. It just make me feel good. That's what I'm sooth says. Say something that will soothe me. Just tell me something that will make me feel good. And the people love it so. So it's, it's, today we're looking at the second one. Because there are so many other 
examples of people that prophesied right there in the scriptures. And if you want to understand the DNA of prophecy, it comes from God. Most of the times, it's not what we expect. Go and check it. Most of the times. So it's usually off. And it's not something that we easily believe. That's why it says, believe in the Lord your God, thou shalt prosper. Believe his prophets. Thou shalt prosper. Your God established prophets, you shall prosper. Second Chronicles 20 verse 20. Why? Because usually it's difficult to believe the prophets. And in, 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 in that instance, a prophet came to Jehoshaphat the king in 2 Kings Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 20. Four kings versus one king in warfare and battle. The numbers were astronomical. Like five times the numbers on the battlefront against Israel. Jehoshaphat knew this battle, I'm going to lose it. And the man of God came. He was crying to God. He was crying and saying, God, how, how do I survive? And the man said, do hear the Lord. Go to battle. You will not need to lift a muscle. I will fight for you and you will win. What did he say? Go to the battle. You will not need to lift a muscle. Sing praise. Just begin to praise me and you win. Bring out timbres of praise. Just begin to say, praise ye the Lord for his mercies and yours for... Excuse me. You are going to battle for not with swords and spears, with instruments of music. Isn't that psycho? Today, will you do that? And the king had to encourage himself because the soldiers did not agree with the prophet. So he now made that statement. They believe in the Lord your God. You'll be established. Believe his prophets. You will prosper. Let's believe them. This is suicide mission. And let's go and kill her. We'll die anyway. If we say that, we'll die. If we go, we'll let's just go and die well. We'll die believing God. And they went. And you know what happened? Exactly as what prophesied. It happened. Prophecies are not supposed to be, the outcomes are not supposed to be expected. The, the, even the content of prophecy is a prophecy. That's why God knows the future. God knows tomorrow. So when God now comes to tell you what will happen tomorrow, no, it can't happen. And God says, that person will become this, this. Sometimes it may take years to happen. We fight it. We struggle. We wrestle in our spirit. We wrestle. We say, no, are you sure? Can, we struggle to accept the prophetic. We struggle. Say, are you sure this is from God? Are you sure this is God speaking to you? So when prophets said to them, I saw you in a vision, I saw you in a dream, you're going to say, are you sure? Yes. It doesn't make sense. It's not meant to make sense. Because if you use your natural mind to analyze divine words, scriptures, you will make mistakes. Prophecies are words from heaven, inspired by him. Because he knows tomorrow. The future is hidden in God. So you need to understand that. And, and people don't understand how the prophetic works. The first thing to explain false prophets, the first thing you have to understand is this. The prophetic, listen to me everybody, is an office. Last week I told you that. That's the biggest mistake we make in church today. The biggest mistake that we make today in church is to assume every pastor is a prophet. That's not true. That's not in the Bible. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, he gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Some, not all. Now, the title, pastor, is what many organizations have adopted for their clergy. In our church, we have three titles. I'm the only reverend here, by God's grace. <laughs> I'm yet to be a bishop. They've offered me three, four times. I turned it down. I have pastors and I have ministers. They are our clergy. It's just the nomenclature in a house. In other churches, like Redeem, my very good place, all of them are pastors. Even our daddy Gio is called pastor. Is a nomenclature in a house. Thank you for that house. Or oh, in the Baptist movement, in Methodist, in Bishop Edible's Church, there are many bishops. Bishop Mike's Church, there are many bishops. It's just a local title to identify clergy and in their hierarchy. It is not what the Bible says. The Bible gives us room to choose the nomenclature we use for our clergy. Does that make sense? I can create one year and say this from next year in Futa, there'll be Ark Minister, Ark Pastor, and Ark Reverend. It is a, it will be in our constitution to be a law in my church. And that's it. The church I came from, Foursquare, they have only reverends and pastors. So I was ordained a reverend in that church, meaning senior ministers and a pastor. But here we have what? Pastors and ministers. So it's also so people know it's the office is different from the title. So I, I laugh every day. I see young boys starting ministry. Say, apostle, apostle. You're a young boy, apostle. Two years old in ministry, apostle. You this boy, you this boy, apostle. This young boy. They call them in school, papa. 
Those boys want to kill. A, a 31 year old, 26 year old boy, they call him Papa. Can you see a 26 year old Papa? <laughs> Only in university campuses in Nigeria. They want to kill the 23. I don't, mommy, that, I don't know. How can you call the Papa? When those are old are trying to get younger, you are 22, you want to be old. Papa, Papa. And they go like this. Small, small boys. So when they leave school, they find it difficult to go and join a church. They start church immediately. Because for four years, you've been called Papa, 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 Papa. So you see all the Papa churches everywhere. Because they are Papas. <laughs> they want to continue being called Papa. Papa at, you, at, your, at your young age. What will you be when you not grow 20 years in ministry? Grandpapa. <laughs> you see, they will soon create a grandpapa office in Nigerian church. There will be grandpapa. You say, I'm not my papa. I was a papa 20 years ago. Now I'm a grand G papa. <laughs> I'm not a G papa. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. It's very important. So the prophetic is an office. The title that that pastor bears may not be Prophet Pedro. That's the title used in a local church. Depends on their local constitution. But that man may be appointed and ordained by God to stand in the office of a prophet. The oil of God is on his life. He sees visions and revelations. He sees into the future. Declares them as his commanded. Ezekiel said, and I prophesied as I was commanded. Ezekiel 33 verse 7. 37 verse 4, 7. I prophesied as I was commanded. That's a different thing. So the first thing is you have to agree that not everybody is in the five-fold ministry, number one. Not everybody is called to five-fold ministry. Number two, from those called in the five-fold ministry, not all of them are what? Prophets. Number three, so the fact that a pastor, an apostle, is preaching a word does not mean speaking a prophetic word. That's what we call apostolic word. I can come here to charge you as an apostle. The apostle is the father of the ministry. Someone who has had years of experience, someone has an authority, governmental, an authority in a particular area. So I come here to charge you, encourage you, exhort you and in an apostolic format, with an apostolic grace. That's not prophetical. A pastor can teach a good word, can be a good teacher, and a evangelist can give a word to the sinners and they come to Christ. That's not a prophetic word. And a evangelist can say, if you don't repent, you will go to hell. Ah, yes, prophesying. It's not prophesying, it's not preaching to you. And then you now run to the altar to give your life to Christ. So the prophetic, number one, is an office. Not everybody is a prophet, thank you. And we must understand that. It doesn't make them less of being a man of God. Does that make sense? Because human beings are naturally fascinated with the future. Knowing the future, what will happen. There's, there's something about us saying, tell me, there's a people pay. They say, see vision, see vision. They pay you, oh, pastor, have a pastor, see me vision, see vision for me. Should I marry this person or not marry that person? We won't ask who should I marry. We are naturally fascinated with people that know the future or can predict what will happen. They go to gamble. All this gambling they do, all this uh, uh, spend, they go and gamble. Which one win? The people pay money on these gambling things. People want to have an idea of the future. What will happen tomorrow? Tell me. Reveal to me. So that means human beings, that's why they now go to false prophets. Because we want to know if my daughter marries this boy, will it be okay tomorrow? Prophet, please tell me what will happen to the... Is this, is this from God? Should he go and walk in that place? You, so we just have a way of trying to know the future. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it comes with our, in our forte DNA. Human beings want to know the future. That's normal. Does that make sense? That's normal. But what is normal is that to think everybody is a prophet. We are not all prophets. And the prophetic is a ministry. It's an office. You need God's grace upon you and oil of God upon you to function in the office of a prophet. Because people want to hear the prophets, many false prophets have now emerged. And last week, I said something that people were asking me questions after. I said, there's a difference between false prophets and lying prophets. Remember I said last week? Somebody came to me after service. Daddy, I didn't realize it all. I thought they're all the same. I said, no, they're not the same. There are so many good pastors who are not false prophets. They're just lying prophets. Jumoke is laughing. Now, what is what, the difference? Uh, there is difference there. I will show you from scripture. Because they tell lies because they want to make money from you. They just, they, you, you people, you pressure us to prophesy. 
If you see, they pray. I told you last week, Daddy, somebody came to my office. She had been swindled, had been, had been deceived by some people. She said she gave her entire livelihood to one pastor. He's somewhere in Aguda. She was now broke than broke. She now came and said, man of God, you know you're a man of God. I've heard so much about you. Sir, this person deceived me, took my money, did this. I sold and I kept sewing. I sold, I kept sewing. They said, I sold a car, I sold this. They told her to sew everything. She sold everything. When she had nothing more to sew, they now told her not to sew anymore to go. So she was now very, very bad. She came to send me my office. Pray for me, sir. I spent like 30 minutes with a counselor to pray with her. And after I finished praying with her, I said, you can go home. The Lord will restore what has been lost. Is that all, sir? I said, yes, that's all. I ain't not seen vision. <laughs> she asked me for vision. I said, I have not seen anything. Why should I lie to you? She said, no, sir, you must see vision. She was demanding I must see vision. I said, my daughter, I'm not going to lie to you. I have not seen anything. Must I tell you I have seen? Ah, but you're a man of God, sir. I said, yes. Are you not a man of God? Yes. Can't you see? Ah, I, said, I, said, I, I, I told her, that's why you are deceived. You are looking for someone that will see. If I now see what is not seen, you will be happy with me. Then I will deceive you for that. The little you have left, I said, go and bring. You still come and bring. Because I'm not going to see something else. The pressure people put on the pulpit is too much. You go and meet people that can't see to say they must see. And they are blind as whatever. And then they're not, you, you force them to see what is not existing. And you just want to leave the place. Hey, you are seeing. They have seen something. I'm telling you. False prophets and lying prophets are different people. That's why I'm going to tell you seven things again. Write it down. The first thing is the prophetic is an office. In the New Testament church, Ephesians 4. The ministry and office of a prophet in the Old Testament and New Testament are the same. Only the covenant changed. And the ministry is very simple. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10 to 13. And like the word Hosea said, Hosea chapter 12, verse 10 to 13 tells us the ministry of a prophet. So it's the same. Both in the Old Testament covenant and New Testament. The covenant changed because Jesus now died for us. We don't need to go and do our own stuff. I have spoken by the prophets. I have multiplied visions. I use similitudes by the ministry. Ministry. Look at that word. Ministry of the prophets. Go to verse 13. And you will see what that ministry is all about. Verse 13. Verse 13. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Deliverance. And by a prophet was it preserved. Preservation. Not just to bring you out, but to keep you out. To bring you out and to preserve you while you are here now with me. That's the ministry of a prophet mentioned in verse 10. In verse 13, he explains it to us. Through the prophetic, God can deliver you. That's what he says there. Now, the other thing that we must note is this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29 to 32, Paul the apostle said, we must judge prophecies. What we do is we judge prophets. There's a difference. So even the man that is prophesying must try to judge prophecies. Say by two or three, First Corinthians 14, 29, if a prophet will speak, speak by two or three and let another judge. You see, so there's nothing wrong with you judging prophecies. Is this from the Lord? I wish or what? That, let's check the content. If a man now comes to you and say, and people, especially women, with all due respect, please apologize. They will just hear anything. I mean, a woman came to me and said, the prophet told me to undress and I undressed. You should judge a... Uh, that prophecy is not from God. You, you are judging the prophet. You are looking at the big name. So because the big man has said it, it must be right. Even though it does not make sense. Why would the Holy Ghost want to see your naked body through the eye of a man of God? <laughs> Tell me! And you naively did it. And the man slept with her. Then, yes, then when the thing broke off her scale of her eyes, she now came to me crying. You trust me. I lashed her further. You see, there'll be papa in you. Are you all right? How could you have believed that the Holy Ghost will tell a man, strip yourself naked? I want to help you. I want to deliver you. Which Holy Ghost? George prophecy. You tell the prophet, sorry, sir, this is not from God. You, they are prophet. <laughs> they are, sir. This is not the Holy Ghost. Because it runs contrary to scripture. This can be scriptural. George the prophecy. But you, once you acknowledge the prophet, you assume everything they are saying is right. Bible says to us in Romans chapter 3 verse 4, before I go to the signs of a false prophet, let God be true and all men liars. You must get to that point. This is where we are right now in Nigeria. Because many people are now saying, shh, 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 God is a liar. Because the men, what they prophesied did not come to pass. No, no, say to them, you are a liar. 
God is still true. Your faith must get to the point where you say, if you prophesy, it does not come to pass, you are a liar, not God. But what we are not saying is that we're not blaming God. Oh, this God said, now what? I'm living in church, I'm living in faith. Why? God said this will happen. It didn't happen. The man said it, not God said this. Do you think God will say something and it will happen? Can you imagine that? So the man may have prophesied the end of his flesh. He was, we are still human beings. You think I don't want my members to become billionaires? One of them comes to my office and says, sir, I'm going for a big job. I say, I prophesy, you will get it. It's natural for me to prophesy, you will get it. It, it, is, it is a natural thing for me to do. So natural, and this is supernatural. God is not leading me there. It's me leading myself. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm a human being. So when people prophesy out of their flesh, do you know, do you know especially when they're in the presence of kings and governors, and they see them like our uh, excellency here, and they say uh, in his office, I say, ah, dear sir, the Lord told me to tell you, it is well with you. you are, yeah, I'll be prophesying lies. Because the office and the order will make you say things that you have not seen. No, you don't know that. You don't know this thing called office. You don't know that. You will say things you've not seen. There was a prophet called Zedekiah in 1 Kings 22. When he saw the king, the king was going to battle. That's a sample of a lying prophet, not a false prophet. I'll show you now. The king was going to battle. And the king called Jehoshaphat. I want to go to warfare. I want to go to warfare. I want to go and fight. Can you please tell me? Go with me. And the man said, okay, I'll go with you. First Kings 22, begin to project verse 5 down. He said, but we cannot go without a prophetic word. Usually before we go to battle, we want to hear from God. Is God going with us? Will he give us victory? Will he give us all kind of stuff? So it's okay, let the prophets come. And he said, the king's okay. No, from verse 5. So when the, when the king came, the prophets came. About 400 prophets, 400 they all say, yeah, 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 go, shall prosper, you shall win. All of them said the same thing. You see, you see, and all of them, shall I go to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Shall I forbear? Shall I win? Look at the next verse. And Jehovah said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides this one? The way they are all prophesying, it looks like a scripted thing. You know, the guy was like, Joseph, I just felt, ah. There's something wrong somewhere now. These people, they, they are so much aligned. And as one we finish, you know, when we pick it up and when that one finishes. And they say, hey, you shall win. Hey. Is there not another prophet? So he was just saying, June, that. He said, well, there's one man. His name is Micaiah. That guy does not like me. He never says anything good about me. <laughs> so even the king knew that he wanted to believe lies. So for you to say there's a prophet, it means that you know he's a man of God. Must have done some few things in the past that came to pass. Two, you already have an opinion against him because the things he says about you are not right. So you don't want to see his face. So you choose the prophets that will come and prophesy to you. Do you, do you see? So you can believe a. Uh, Joshua said, hey, Call him, let us hear him. So they went to bring the man. Now, what I like is when they went to bring the man, uh, no, go back. The people that went to bring him, they told him, Come, come, come. Everybody has prophesied what is good. You see? Please, so when you get there, you to say what is good. He's there. Are you sure? Give me the next verse. They told him. They were even coaching him on what to say. Imagine you coaching the prophet how to prophesy. He said everything, everybody. Then Micah said, no, I will only say what the Lord has put in my mouth. I will not say anything else beyond that. Anything God has not told me to do, I will not do. So, okay. And they got there. When they got there, the king said, Micah, Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Professor, I'm going to battle. Will I come back? Will I win? Tell me the truth. Then the prophet, like him, he lied. He said, Thus say the Lord, you shall prosper. Go, you will win. You will defeat them. And then that king said, Have I not told you not to lie to me? Tell me the truth. Brethren, does that make sense? That means the king himself knew they were lying to him. Because when the man now said what you wanted to hear, you told him, no, 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 say the truth. So you know that what they were saying was a lie, you know. He told him, have I not told you not to lie to me? Hey, please, tell me what is, what is going to happen. Then he said, I saw Israel like a sheep scattered without a shepherd. You'll be defeated in battle. You, you will die in this battle. If you go, you will not come back. Thus yet, Lord. Then Zedekiah, that lying prophet, gave him a dirty slab, led by the Holy Ghost. Wah! <laughs> and he said, when did the Holy Ghost leave me to come to you? 
I am the one that is in custody of the power of God. I'm the only one that is in custody of the Holy Ghost. Say, so from whence left the Spirit from me to thee to speak to you? He slapped him. That man must have slapped him in the Spirit. He came in the desk. But the other guy did not return the slap. He looked at him and said, Ah, you too. You are slapping me. You will see this thing come to pass. And yeah, you will be. You will go and hide in your chambers when they bring the cops of the, of the king. You will hide in your chambers. But that man had even done something melodramatic. He brought two horns. He kicked them. He said, Don't share the Lord. This is how you will defeat your enemies. Like a horn. You will kill them. He crushed them. You know the story. What I like about that story. Let me tell you what I like. Let me tell you what I like. The king knew that guy was a prophet. He knew. How did I know? He now told Jehoshaphat, Come, as we are going to battle, I want to disguise. I will wear, I will dress like a commoner. I will not wear kingly robe. Because they may be targeting me. You dress like a king. Me, I will dress like a pauper. We will go to battle. Why would you change your appearance if you don't believe that prophecy is going to come to pass? I'm going to prove God a liar. This time, I will make sure this God, eh, I will cheat on him. This God, I will prove him as a liar. So he changed. He disguised. He said, the king will disguise himself and went to battle. And when he got there, because you cannot prove God a liar, a man by chance, some foolish man somewhere just threw an arrow, not targeting you. Like a scud missile, that arrow began to look for you. <laughs> eh? And we even though you are disguised, the arrow was shot by chance, the arrow was guided by the Holy Ghost and struck you where you will never survive. And the king was struck. And then the king died. He planned to cheat and say to God, I will prove God wrong. Whenever God says something, it will come to pass. No man on earth can prove God wrong. If you like these guys, wear a different apparel, you will find that the arrow of God's word will locate you. The arrow of God's word, it will locate you. And if it's God, if it is God, believe you me, it will happen. It will happen. That's Zedekiah was a lying prophet because he was a, was a, was a, he was not a false prophet. He was a prophet of the Lord, one of the prophets of God. He wasn't serving Baal or Ashtaroth. He was serving Jehovah and Yahweh. He was serving Yahweh. But because he was in the presence of the king, he got mesmerized and he started lying. He started lying. He started telling lies to the king. False prophets still exist in Nigeria today. Jesus warned us about false prophets. You know that, don't you? He said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, by their fruits you will know them. Beware of false prophets. If our Lord Jesus could warn us about false prophets, why would you think they don't exist? They are there. He said they will come to you in sheep's clothing. Can you see? But inwardly they are ravening wolves. By their fruits, he didn't say by their gifts. We are moved with gifts, not fruits. If you read it further down, he said they will prophesy, they will do wonders, they will do miracles. A false prophet can never do miracles. The question is, where is it coming from? I'll tell you how. The realm of the spirit, there is good, there is evil. There is God, there is the devil. The devil is a spiritual being. The devil is a spirit. Is that clear? The devil can do miracles, means something that is supernatural. The devil is a supernatural being. He's not a natural being. The devil can cause supernatural things to happen. He has his own servants, his own ministers on earth. He can fill them with his own power to deceive the people and to do lying wonders. Bible calls it lying wonders. There was a man that Moses threw down his rod and it became a serpent. Three magicians threw down the same rod, became a serpent. No big deal. They can do the same. But not from God. Because human beings are moved with spectacular things. Once we see a spectacular thing, we don't assume it's from God. We don't want to doubt or try to check the source. I'm not speaking about the work. The source. The source and the resource are two different things. So if I see the source, it's the source I'm really concerned about. Where is it coming from? Where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? We judge people usually by their clothing. He says they will come in sheep's clothing. They will dress well. They will dress like Pastor Pedro. They will look like Pastor Fela. They will almost speak well. I hear them doing everybody. But listen, listen. Check the character. Inward, they are wolves. You are a sheep. All they want to do is to fleece you, to eat you, to take your money. That's why I don't like prophets when they prophesy. They say, come and sow seed. I run. You're a thief. Because you're telling me, come and pay. You're a thief. 
Come on, we sit at my soul every time. Must, must there be money in it? There's some preachers, they can't preach a good sermon without asking for money. Most we take money. By their fruits, we shall know them. Not by their clothing. If you judge a man of God with his clothing, you are wrong. Jesus said so. He said they will come in sheep's clothing. If you judge them by their outward, then you're making a mistake. They can dress well. They can speak well. They can do good stuff. But check their character. Check the hand of their summons. If you begin to attack, attack money, attach money to it, there's something wrong there. So Jesus warned us about, about false prophets. Apostle Paul warned us about false prophets as well. One thing you need to know as well is that prophecies have timelines. This is the major problem in the body of Christ, including me. This is the major problem. We tend to think God uses our own calendar. God does not use this thing to work. That's the first lesson I learned many years ago from an older friend, Elder Olusoya. He and I were talking years ago. He said, Reverend Kasali, when you want to work with God, the first thing you must do is take this out because it does not work with your own time. From that day, I began to say, wow. He said, God will not use this to work because if you use this, say, God, I think it's, it's time for my miracle. Why is it not here? It isn't your own time. His own time is different. His own time is different. For God, is still waiting time for you. Still wait. They say, but God, I'm ready to be king. He told David, not yet. Yeah. But, 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 you, but you anointed me. Not yet. When am I going to be king? Not yet. It's not yet time for you to be king. So, so God has his own timetable. But we always want God to work with our own. God, I think it's time for my lifting. What do you think? I'm ready. I'm prepared. I'm going to have it. I'm ready for the next. God says, not yet. Ten more years. Ten more years? <laughs> you prophesied ten years ago? Yes, I know. You mean this? I thought it was going to happen the following year. Oh, no. Every time you, and that's where we deceive ourselves. Every December, the pressure is on your Kasali. What will happen this year? We have prophesied. Sometimes God will tell me what he has shown me. And I will announce in church. It may not happen until 18 months after. And I've seen it happen in this church. And I said, but that he told us to happen in 2021. You know, I told you what God showed me. He showed me in 2020. So I announced it in 2021. I was hoping he would do it in 2021. It didn't happen. It's not my business. I've only showed you what I have told you what he showed me. So we keep looking at our own calendar to say, God, why is it happening this year? Let me give you two or three examples of that. It will amaze you. I saw it as I was studying last night. I was telling my wife, it was very, very deep. Elijah prophesied about Ahab's death. Elijah. He said, Ahab will die with his wife. But do you know it did not happen while Elijah was alive? It happened about 40 years after, during Elisha's time. If it was you and I, we would say Elijah was a false prophet. Because he said it. The man still lived the second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year. It didn't happen. It was his own protege, Elisha, that witnessed it. It happened in Elisha's period. Another one. Jesus prophesied about the destruction of the temple. Yes or no? In Matthew 24, Jesus came and said, See the this temple? It will be destroyed. Not one stone will be left on the other. And then one year after, nothing happened. Two years after, Jesus was destroyed. He, he was killed. So if it was you and I, my boy, pardon me. My boy, pardon me. Nothing happened. Ten years after, it didn't happen. It happened 40 years after, AD 70. General Titus came in, destroyed Israel, and pulled the temple down. It didn't happen 10 years, 40 years after. Christ died AD 30. The thing occurred AD 70. If it was today, what would you say? Yeah, yeah, lie. Because we're always in a hurry. We are in a hurry. He's not in a hurry. You are doing in a hurry. Uh, the most difficult thing to do in life is to wait on God. Yeah. To wait on God. Yeah. That thing is difficult to yeah. Every time I tell him, I say that, yeah, but I told you to wait. I've been waiting for a while now. Because we wait. We, you know, that's why in scripture, I think Psalm 37, he said, wait patiently. To wait alone is wahala. Do not add patience to it. No, can you imagine? Sir, to wait is wahala. Do not say wait patiently. Because human beings are in a hurry. Am I right? Everything we do is what? Fast pace, fast pace, fast pace. So we want God to do fast pace miracle, microwave breakthrough. And God will not do his own fast pace. We're in a fast pace generation. Everything now, 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 now. So we come to God's presence with a now, 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 now spirit and attitude. God has his own time. His own timetable, his time and calendar is different from ours. 
Gregorian calendar we're using, it's not God's idea, it's you, Volo. Before Gregorian calendar, there are other calendars in the world. So our own December may not be so December. You see, this thing, people don't understand how to work with God. The Jewish calendar is different. He said, this month of Nisan shall be the beginning of months to you. That's photo in the Nigerian calendar, April. It's Nisan in the Hebrew calendar. So which, only, which calendar is God using in heaven? Don't tell them I told you. God does not work with your time. He has his own time. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. They asked Jesus, when will God restore the kingdom? He said, forget it. Do not bother about what is in God's hand. Power and time is in God's hand. Just you do what you are called to do. Let God fix the things he will fix. That's why it's difficult to believe God. When prophets prophesy, they prophesy, they don't know the time. They only say what will happen. They may not know the time. And so the time, we now say, it didn't happen in the next two months. The person is a liar. A young prophet prophesied about the first altar. Remember, first Kings 13. Do you know what when it happened? I studied it yesterday. The man came in first Kings 13. said, this altar will, die, will go down. A, a son will be born. His name will be Josiah. He mentioned the boy's name. The boy will become the king of this land. And the boy will destroy this altar. He mentioned the boy's name. He said the boy king will be so great soon. First Kings chapter 13. He mentioned the boy's name. Guess when it happened? 322 years after. So tell me if you are in generation. Would you say that man is a prophet? Josiah was born 300 years after the prophecy. <laughs> tell me. 300 years after the prophecy. What kind of prophecy is that one? If I'm the prophet, I'll tell God, please don't send me that kind of message. Me, I'll say that the place now. They'll they say I'm a liar now. Tell me what will happen tomorrow so I can tell them, so they can know I'm a man of God. How can you tell me something that will happen 20 years from now? They will think I'm a liar. 300 years after. <laughs> 300 years after it occurred. That destruction of the altar of Bethel occurred 348 years after. 348 years after. A man of God, you know him, prophesied about the death of Eli's sons. Remember, your son shall die the same day. One man comes and says, your two sons shall die the same day because you love them and I love God in 4 Samuel. That thing did not happen. When he was saying it, Samuel was just uh, 12 years old. Samuel became king, priest, 28 years after. The two sons died almost 30 years after. Would you call that man of God a liar? <laughs> they both died in the same battle. So when it comes to timing, that's where we all miss it, including me. This man has spoken. It has not happened. Maybe God lied. Or maybe the man lied. That's not how God works. There was a man called Isaiah. He prophesied about the birth of Cyrus the king, Isaiah 44. Do you know when he was born? 170 years, 175 years after. 175 years after Isaiah prophesied about there a king will come. He's going to be anointed of the Lord. Isaiah 44, Isaiah 45. His name is Cyrus. He will deliver Israel. They will take us to Babylon through Nebuchadnezzar. He will pull us out of Babylon. It happened when? 175 years after. Can I continue? Jeremiah prophesied. Daniel said, I understood by the books. When I studied the books, and I said, ah, Jeremiah prophesied 70 years of captivity. 70. And it occurred. Brethren, God does not work the way we work. And when he speaks through his prophets, you should always not think it must happen tomorrow morning. What you should just is to understand that the signs of a prophetic is with that man and believe. Don't always expect it to happen next month, two months time. Why is it not happening? Then that man is not a prophet. It's not a prophet. That's not how to judge prophets, priests, or prophecies. There must be right ways of judging false prophets. A false prophet, I'm rounding up now, Deuteronomy 13. A false prophet is someone, listen to me, according to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 13, that after he has prophesied, whether good or evil, wonders, miracles, whatever happened, takes you to a false god. Baal, Ashtaroth, serves a different god from Yahweh or Jehovah. That is a false prophet. That's what the Bible says to us in the book of Deuteronomy 
to define a false prophet. Chapter 13. So when God was speaking about false prophets, saying those that will take you to another god, another idol, another pagan, maybe you're worshiping mammon. When I say there are many false prophets today, they're telling us to go and worship mammon, not worship God. Now, that's how you know a false prophet. The Bible tells us that. But a lying prophet is a Christian, a man called of God. But because of whatever is happening, he's telling you lies. I'll give an example. In that first Kings 13, there was an old prophet and a young prophet. The young prophet prophesied. The old prophet came to meet him and said, God told me to tell you to come and eat in my house. The Bible says in verse 8, but he lied. He lied. And the young prophet followed him home. They had dinner. During the dinner, the same God, this God is a good God though. God is very difficult to understand. The same God now spoke through the lying prophet. Thus hear the law to you because you have not heeded my voice. I warned you not to come here. You came here. Your carcass will be found on the street. Share the Lord. A lion shall hit you and not hit, kill you and not eat you. How can a lion kill and not eat? He's not hungry. And the thing happened the same day. You know, every time I read that pastor, I say, God, why did you use that same prophet? You should have used another person. The same one that lied was the one God used to rebuke him. When they now buried the man, years after, they do, his sons came, Sir, that man that came to visit you today, do you know he's dead? The lion has killed him. I said, I know. He is the prophet that disobeyed the voice of the Lord. He said, he is the prophet that disobeyed the voice of the Lord. But you are the one that told him that told him a lie. You lied to him? To disobey God's voice? Say that that man is a lying, not a false prophet. God, God still used him. He didn't say go and worship idols. God used him to execute judgment upon the young prophet. So there are many lying prophets that are not false prophets, please. Because when you come to see a man of God like Reverend Kasali, and, and, and you come and say, Man of God, I, I want to see you today, sir. The Lord has just blessed me with some business. I want to give you a title of one million dollars. It's very important that I'm a prophet. High. Most, no, most, most truly yours. Eh? My sister is there, Tolu. You know me now. Tolu, I will prophesy. Naturally speaking, you give me that kind of title and say, God bless you. I'll say, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, 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 yo. My brother, God told me last week you're coming. Ha, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you that. I'm seeing greatness. I'm, uncle, I'm already great. If I can give you this kind of check, I'm already. So it, it's, it's likely that I prophesy. Likely. So please, if I do that, that's my nature. Please forgive me. But for you not to prophesy, it takes great spiritual discipline to say, God is not speaking to me to give you a word. Go and give the tithe to the church. It's not me. I don't own tithe. God owns tithe. Go and give it to the treasurer. It takes a bit of discipline. No? Not many men can do that too. It's not easy. Oh. This thing will come. It's not easy. It's not easy. Money comes, you will begin to forget God because gold and God cannot compete. In. It takes a lot of spiritual discipline to keep yourself saying, no, God, I'm sorry. I will not do this. That money perish with you. I will not do this. Or that fame. So, so, so lying prophet, to, to lie can be so easy. That old man just lied because he wanted the guy to come to his house. He lied. He had to lie. Come home. Man. That's how, uh, but God even God told me to. An angel told me that he should come, come home. Let's go and eat together. And he lied. And derailed him. And he missed it. Brethren, we are entering a season of prophecies again. That's why I'm preaching this. I said two week series. The next one week, you will see social media agog with prophecies. One prophet said this, one prophet said that, about the governor, about president. They always prophesy about governors and presidents. I don't know why they can't prophesy about the paper seller on the street. Have you noticed it? Always prophesy about rich people. Have you noticed it? This is your God and prophecy. Why is it about rich people only? This is, we're entering that season. And every year we're in that this season, it weakens the faith of some and crushes the faith of others. Please. Do not let your heart be moved. Serve the Lord your God. Do not look and search for prophecies. Please, just stay there as a child of God. Go to church. Don't put pressure on any pulpit to prophesy to you. Tonight is our watch night service. I will tell you what God has showed me. I talked only yesterday. Some things that God has told me already will happen this year and next year. And if it doesn't happen, so that's all I'm going to announce. I'm not going to cook up anything. If you have worked with me for 30 years, Pedro, I will never cook up anything. I don't know how to cook up. Because I don't want to please you. I want to please him. If you like, come to church. If you like, leave the church and say, I don't have anointing. That's your business. I won't because I want to please you. Now begin to cook up anointing I don't have. 
Don't let's do that. You don't put pressure on but Just go there. Serve the Lord your God. Be careful of all the prophecies that be flying. You will hear all kinds of prophecies flying. Discern a lying prophet from a false prophet. And make sure your own heart is given to him and him alone. Put your hands together for Jesus. Rise to your feet, everybody.